Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. So today we are going to proceed with our chapter number four, which is the timer instruction in this PLC and automation. Okay, before we begin, I would like to uh, let you know that timer is very uh, important and indispensable in PLC programming because uh, the industry has to determine a certain process or certain action in time. So this is the content of this topic today. So first thing first, we need to know why uh, we need a timer in detail. Okay, and then we need to know the different type of timers available for the PLC programming. Also, we need to know how to write the uh, how to read uh, the timing diagram, and then what is on delay timer, off delay timer, and then after that, uh, you're going to do your exercise and ex assignment. In many control tasks, the timer is really important to control time of certain process and action. For example, a motor pump might need to be controlled to operate for a certain interval time or perhaps to be switched on and off after some time uh, or after some interval time. In PLC programming, there are timers, uh, which is the built-in devices uh, in the PLC that you can choose uh, from uh, the memory. And then, uh, how does this timer do the counting? So the timer counts the fraction of seconds uh, using the internal clocks uh, that is available in the CPU of that PLC. Timers in PLC instruction is measuring the amount of time elapsed uh, following, an, uh, following an event. And then timer instruction uh, normally perform the timing operation uh, based on a precise internal clock uh, with the smallest resolution of 0.01 seconds per clock pulse. And then in a PLC program, the timer instruction, it can be used as a delay circuit or a timer function. So let me show you the basic function of timers. So in the first function, the use of the timer is to delay the output. For example, in this uh, timing diagram, so when uh, the timer has been switched on, so it will start counting. Okay, and then after uh, the elapsed time is complete, and then only then your output will be turned on. So this is the function uh, of using timer as a delay in your operation to delay uh, the output. The second use of timer is to run the output at certain duration. So for example, if you want to run this output at certain time. So you can run the timer. When the timer is up, so it will shut down the output. So in this case, the timer is used as a delay to run the process. So there are three types, usually three types of timer used. But the basic timer that is used in the PLC is normally the on-delay timer and off-delay timer. There is also another type of timer which is retentative, retentative timers uh, that run differently from the two previous timers. And then each timer in the PLC program has a unique number uh, to distinguish it from one timer to another. And then uh, normally this timer is uh, located uh, to the right rail in a rung. And then the on delay timer uh, is enabled when the rung of that timer is true. So this is the inputs and outputs of a timer in a Siemens Sematic 7S7. The timer is actually uh, according to the uh, types of PLC and then the producer of that PLC. So in this example, for Siemens Sematic S7, the total timers that is available at this PLC is 64, which is addressed from T0 to T, uh, T63. And then each timer use 16 bits of a system memory or data memory. And then there are five types of timer available for this Sematic S7. The pulse timer, extended pulse timer, on delay, retentive on delay timer, and off delay timer. So these are uh, the notation of each of these timer in the Sematic S7. So now we move to the on delay timer. So on delay timer is used when we need a time delay before an instruction becomes true. So the output is not switched on until a configured delay has expired. This is a block representation of a on delay timer which contains the timer number okay, or, or the timer file name or the timer name and then the time base 
uh, which is normally in second, and then the preset value, which is uh, the numeric value that is set by uh, the programmer, determine the required delay for that timer, and then the accumulated value. So these values are counting is displayed from zero and then the value becomes zero whenever the timer is equivalent to the value in the preset value. Let us see the timing diagram of the on delay timer. So when the run condition here becomes true here, so the timer will start count. So when the value, the accumulated value is equal to the uh, numeric value at the preset value, meaning that the timer is done and therefore the output will be turned on or will be true. So this is the basic function of on delay timer. So the output uh, will become true when the on delay time duration is finished or complete. So in this specific timing diagram for on delay timer, so it has trigger input here, okay, which uh, will be uh, set by the input rungs and then this is the parameter. So when the input rung or the trigger uh, or the trigger to this timer is true here so it will start the timer so the timer will start counting the time and then when the accumulated value is equal to the value of the preset value here meaning that it has done or it has completed and only then the output will be Turn on. So this is uh, the specific timing diagram for on delay timer. Now we move to the second delay timer which is the off delay timer. So the, the off delay timer will keep the output energized for a preset time after the run signal has gone false. So the output will uh, with off delay is not reset until a defined time has expired. Okay, the function here is similar to the on delay timer. Okay, it's just that the timing diagram is different because the operation of off delay timer is different from on delay timer. So if in uh, on delay timer, when the trigger input is true, then the timer will be start counting. But it is different with the off delay timer. So when you give input true or trigger true to the timer the output will be turned on okay the output will be turned on when the trigger input becomes false here meaning that you off the switch of that rung of the timer rung only then the timer will be started it will start count the timing value will be start accumulated until it reach the value that is equal to the preset value of the timer, then the timer is done. When the timer is done, then the output will be false here. So it is a different operation uh, between off delay timer and on delay timer. I hope you can catch the difference. This is the specific timing diagram for off delay timer. So it has a trigger input here and then it has a reset value and a parameter. When the trigger input here is on, the output already on. Okay, but the timer is not yet started here. When you turn off the trigger, the timer will be started. It will start counting the time. So when the time has completed, it is uh, equal to the numeric value in the preset value. Only then the output of the logic will be turned off. So this is the difference between the off delay timer and on delay timer. This diagram summarizes the difference between on delay timer and off delay timer. So in on delay timer, the output will be not turned on until the delay of that time has been completed. While in the off delay timer, the output will be turned off when the off delay time is finished or the timer will be turned on 
when the input trigger is off and then it will start counting and then when it has done the output will be turned off okay so you can see the difference between on delay timer and off delay timer in this summarized timing diagram so this is the ladder logic diagram in the plc so i will show you the difference between on delay timer and off delay timer so you build uh, the timing function uh, in the logo software so the first one is for on delay timer and then the second one is for off delay timer so i1 is the trigger input to the timer and then from this round you can see that the timer is located on the right side of the round okay so uh, you can configure the timer because uh, the timer the timer based function in this plc is in second so you can put in this case i put five seconds so the timer will be running for five seconds and then once the timer is completed it will turn on q1 so let us see the simulation so when when input one is turned on meaning that you give a trigger input to the timer so the timer will be start counting once it has done it will turn on the q1 okay so q1 is turned on so when you turn off the timer q1 will be turned off this is the off delay timer so in this simulation this off delay timer you can choose from the special function here and then you can put it on the right side of the uh, of your round okay and then this uh, once the timer has done its timing function and then it will turn off the output queue and therefore you need to put the input here as a timer input so let us run this simulation when the input 2 is true it will not start the timer but it, it is already turned on the output so when you turn off this switch the timing started it will count and then when it has done it will turn off the output so hopefully you can see the difference between the on delay timer and off delay timer you can run this simulation by using logo so if you look into this timing diagram i repeat again this timing diagram so i 0, 0 is a trigger input to the timer for on delay timer so when the trigger input is turned on it will start the timing here so once the timer has done or completed only then the output will be turned off a uh, turn on sorry however in off delay timer when the input trigger is turned on the output is already turned on but the timer is not yet so when you turn off the trigger input only then the timer will be start counting okay will be start uh, the counting and then once the timer has done so it will be turned off the output here yeah. now we move to retentive timers so a retentive timer is used when you want to retain accumulated time value through the power loss or the change in the round state so meaning that even though you have cut down the input to the the input trigger to the timer to the retentive timer the timer will keep counting the time okay regardless the power loss or the change in the round state the retentive timer accumulates time whenever the device receives power and it maintains the current time should power be removed from the device. So meaning that if you turn off the trigger, input to the timer, it will still keep counting the timer. Loss of power to the timer after reaching its preset value does not affect the state of the context. So the retentive timer must be intentionally reset with a separate signal for the accumulated time to be reset. So if you want to reset the retentive timer, you must supply the input to the reset port of that retentive timer. I will show you uh, in detail in the simulation. This is the retentive timer circuit in the ladder logic diagram in logo. So to have this retentive circuit, you can choose it from the special function here you can use this retentive on delay so in this retentive block diagram it has two input here the first one is the trigger input to this timer and then the second one is the, the reset input to this timer 
I will show you both effect when we have a reset input and uh, secondly when we take out the reset input from this timer. So input 3 is the trigger input to this retentive timer and then uh, Input 5 is the reset input to this retentive timer by using the memory. If we turn on the trigger, the input trigger switch to this retentive timer, the timer will start count. When we turn it off, it will continue to count the time. Okay? And then when, you, when the timer is done, so the output will be turned on. But if you restart the trigger input, it will not start this timer because you have not reset it to its preset value, to its uh, initial uh, base value. Okay, and therefore, you need to reset it by pressing this reset button. So when the preset button is, uh, when the reset button is pressed, okay, it will reset the value at this retentive timer. Only then you can start recount it. Okay, even though you have uh, switched off the input trigger, it will start. It will just continue to count the time, and then it will uh, turn on the output when the time has done or completed. But to reset it, you need a reset button. So this is uh, the circuit of retentive timer. Okay. It will keep continue uh, the counting process even though you have cut uh, the power uh, from the timer or you, you have already switched off the trigger input here. It will keep continue to count the time. And then to reset it, you need a reset button. Otherwise, you cannot reuse the timer uh, from zero. So that's all for today. Uh, hopefully, you can differentiate between on delay timer, off delay timer and retentive timer. So in, in your next class, we will start uh, doing the exercise and assignments and I will see you again later. Okay, thank you.